Quantum mechanics are impossible to prove or disprove almost everywhere. This makes them as virtually bulletproof as highly questionable. Several concepts are considered pillars of quantum mechanics, but such principles suffer from the same issues of the theory they should support. Everything is inferred without direct evidence. Quantum mechanics is approximable with determinism, but unlike the latter, it is not falsifiable. The only element of experimental concreteness, beyond a lot of statistics on paper, is the Bell inequality. Quantum mechanics hold tight to Bell inequality since it is the one keeping together the whole theory. Here, indeed, it seems that quantum mechanics shows some degree of correlation between systems that looks impossible for classical physics. The current paradigm states that quantum mechanics is proved by Bell inequality, and we have to go back to 1935 uh, with the famous EPR paper to see how it's possible. Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen were questioning the newborn quantum mechanic for its chronical incompleteness. Here they focus especially on conjugated momentum position in uh, entangled systems to expose their critics. Leaving the system too undisturbed, they hypothesize the measurement of position or its conjugate momentum in system 1. This measurement changes the wave function describing the entangled system, but since the wave function should entirely describe the system, it means that an arbitrary choice on system 1 should affect what is real in system 2. In other words, as a consequence of measurement, quantum mechanics can assign two different wave functions to the same reality, changing what is real in the undisturbed system according to arbitrary choices. Here EPR leaves two options. The wave function description is incomplete, or position and momentum can't exist together. Since two is not a reasonable description of reality, and uh, here we have two wave functions describing the same undisturbed system, they concluded that the wave function is incomplete. Critical issues about quantum mechanics uh, emerge immediately, since the theory is forcing us to accept some strong assumption in order to deal with it. The wave function is a complete description of the system, so it contains all the properties, and these properties are undetermined and exist only uh, during measurement. So I take an entangled couple and I measure momentum of the first while I measure position on the second. Despite uh, here I can exactly know both conjugated values of the wave function and somehow system 2 must have reached the detector, according to quantum mechanics system 2 doesn't have momentum. It is emphasized that within system 2 momentum can't exist because if it were just unknown it would be hidden variables. We consider a generic system to which we assign some properties. It is experimentally possible to measure such values in the system, so for each physical property we have an element of physical reality. These are the two relative conjugated values we are going to analyze. The wave function contains all the mentioned property, but none of these values is an element of reality. It follows that a quantum system exists as wave function without any of its property existing. I now measure its position and this causes the collapse of the wave function. Position becomes an element of reality, but after the measurement the system is again undefined as wave function. If now I want to measure its momentum, mass and velocity becomes real. It becomes evident from this representation how properties can appear into reality and disappear out of nowhere without physical explanation. How can I measure a mass here if uh, position made uh, all other values disappear with the collapse? Quantum models have no consistency or continuity and they are just counterfeiting determinism. When I look for position, I find position, and when I look for momentum, I find momentum. Indeed, uh, these two models are indistinguishable at experimental level. But it's pretty clear that quantum mechanics is cheating, leveraging on difficulty in proving the existence of what is not currently measured. Actually, there should be an experimental difference between the two models. When I measure position, 
with quantum mechanics, the only element of reality is position. So it follows that in quantum mechanics, uh, measurement of position cannot affect the following velocity of the system because velocity doesn't exist. This means that the second measurement in quantum mechanics differs from determinism, since in determinism, velocity, as all other properties, is always an element of reality. Only with hidden variables, uh, measurement of position can affect the velocity even when it's not measured. Incompleteness that EPR were trying to explain is subtle because it's mostly conceptual. It's not about the wave function or the measurement themselves, but on how quantum mechanics relate ignorance and knowledge with respect to reality. Quantum mechanics is unable to conceive measurement as limited representation of a much wider reality. Within determinism, our knowledge doesn't affect what is real. In quantum mechanics, the unknown doesn't exist. One of the most important turning points for quantum mechanics is the 1947 Shelter Island Conference, after World War II and the atomic bomb. And here we went from this to this. In 1957, Heronov and Bohm published a discussion about the EPR paper. They start considering one molecule with integer spin made out of two atoms with the spin one half. But they claim that experimental capabilities were limited. Anyway, they are focusing on violation of locality and correlation of spin. But we saw this is not what EPR paper is about. Indeed, the here is where the Strowman argument starts growing. Entanglement violating locality is definitely a problem, but EPR are questioning how quantum mechanics deals with the reality. Aronov and Bohm end up counting correlation with entangled pairs of photons measured at different angles, because they state it is equivalent to experiment with polarized light in place of atoms. Even if they have similar mathematical treatment, this approach leads to the execution of experiments where light and atoms are not equivalent, but they keep being considered such. Aronov and Bohm arguments have never been corrected, and they are instead inherited by all the following publications, including the current ones. Bell published its paper about inequality in 1964, building on Aronov and Bohm. Additional variables of EPR are the elements of reality that shouldn't disappear or reappear out of nowhere. Also, here Bell claims no hidden variable interpretation of quantum mechanics is possible, but determinism with hidden variable is used to understand physics and experimental results. It's not meant to make sense of quantum mechanics. Bell starts measuring the spin of two entangled atoms in two Strangerness apparatus away from each other. It should be noted that you better use integer spin in Strangerlat because half spin particle results in a strong Lorentz force. Here it is hypothesized that the two apparatus can have different angles and the orientation do not affect results. Results are obviously not directly affected but here we are testing correlations between two entangled atoms. So we can have this kind of situation. Turn like analysis is anyway off topic and pointless here since none of this is experimentally tested. In the paper, Bell adds uh, lambda as the equivalent of additional variables, but we already saw what it actually means. The publication ends up with quantum mechanics predicting a level of correlations impossible for determinism. From the very beginning, experiments are performed using light, and here we have another strawman. Quantum mechanics uses light and polarizers to prove Bell inequality of atoms with magnets is violated. Quantum mechanics says this is the deterministic model while these are the experimental outcomes in agreement with its theory. Quantum mechanic is considering equivalent testing with light and atoms, so this discrepancy is not because of different experiments, but because of different theories. And this is wrong. From the 70s up to these days, 
Uncountable experiments confirm that the hidden variable is an impossible explanation and with Bell we are witnessing a real quantum effect. Entangled light waves are orthogonal, their polarization has a range of 90 degrees, while spin up down in atoms span over 180 degrees. Problem is, uh, while shooting 100 atoms uh, through a Stranguerla results in 100 particles detected on the other side, no matter the angle of interaction, when we use light and polarizer, this equivalence doesn't hold. In a vertically polarized wave, going through a 45 degree polarizer, only half of its amplitude is transmitted with the new polarization. For 100 of energy in the incident light, uh, only 15 remains after. In quantum mechanics we don't have one wave hitting the polarizer, but many photons incoming. Some of them bounces back while some are transmitted. So here again we have the unphysical uh, different outcomes from the same input. Since with the same interaction, independent systems can react in opposite ways and there is no explanation for this behavior. The model agrees with the results, and conservation of energy is respected as statistics of randomness within independent systems. When light and polarizers have 90 degrees of delta, nothing is detected on the other side, so with light we can have dramatically different results compared to atoms. The effect of polarizers becomes interesting when we deal uh, with more polarizer arranged in series. What matters is the delta p between the angle of the incident wave and the orientation of the polarizer. Since uh, 45 degrees of difference is halving the energy, instead of one 90 degree polarizer, I use two 45 degree polarizers. So to apply the same rotation, but in two steps. Doing this way, it is still possible to detect about a quarter of the energy after 90 degrees of rotation, which is way more compared to the nothing we have here. What is not immediately apparent is the dynamic of light interacting with polarizers. As Compton showed, physics of angled interaction does not follow a linear trend. 5 degrees of delta P is cause of minimal differences, while 85 degrees is very close to 90 degrees results. And uh, a delta P of 22 degrees transmit uh, about 85% of the incident light. It also follows, as example, that if I rotate the system by 90 degrees with 18 steps of 5 degrees, most of the light will be transmitted. According to the angle of interaction between wave and polarizer, different amounts of energy can reach the detector. The amount transmitted has proportional influence on the probability of detection, and this is exactly what we observe within all experiments that should prove the quantum correlation impossible for hidden variables. Since quantum mechanics is statistics of detections over thousands of executions, the curve that is passed off as uh, correlation violating classical physics is just how probable is detection according to the amount of energy that is transmitted. So there is nothing quantum here, it's determinism with hidden variables. Following this, uh, it doesn't matter which Rube Goldberg experiment a physicist put in place. Entanglement doesn't violate relativity. It's a deterministic correlation with both realism and uh, locality. Space-time separation and uh, timing of measurement cannot change in any way the results. Everything originated from Haranov and Bohm and by overlooking the differences between atoms and light. The original EPR paper has never been really questioned and the history of Bell inequality is full of Strowman arguments. Polarization of light with its correlation is easily explainable with hidden variables. So even the one pillar holding the whole quantum mechanic is made up, because physicists look for agreement in place of computations. And current paradigm stands on a heavily biased consensus. 
Quantum mechanics uh, uses arbitrary methods, taking advantage of the fact that it cannot be proved what is not observed. Since with quantum mechanics, reality pop out from nowhere and violate both energy conservation and relativity, we need to mark it as unphysical from its very base. It is necessary to look from the outside to see quantum mechanic mistakes. Flows start from the statements, no evidence supports the assumptions, yet the physicists accept uh, non-physical and unprovable statements as foundation. And at this point they are already done. It's a recursive theory, invisible and uh, full of arbitrariness, so it's almost impossible to disprove quantum mechanics using its own math and rules. With quantum mechanics, uh, subjectivity of one is universal objectivity, as Schrodinger was trying to show with the cat. Even if uh, logical fallacies are quite evident, uh, quantum mechanics argues back with math. But math is not physics, and the faith in quantum mechanics can't withstand this scientific method. Quantum mechanics cannot be used to understand physics because it needs to violate physical laws in order to work. It is uh, incompatible with the scientific method, and uh, in the end, it's just uh, counterfeiting determinism with hidden variables.